More Heart Than Talent Radio. More Heart Than Talent Radio is brought to you today by my Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle Coaching Program. If you find yourself struggling to find your breakthrough and frustrated with your results, join my Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle Coaching Program. It's a private video coaching call every other week where I'll be teaching the skill of the week followed by coaching. JCIC members one-on-one live for observation. All calls are recorded and posted in the JCIC members area. Members will have access to the private JCIC Facebook group where they can ask questions, interact with me, my Golden Mastermind team, the other JCIC members, and receive any support required in their breakthrough process. When you enroll, you'll receive the new members welcome kit, which includes my new Breakthrough Factor audio program, my Breakthrough Accelerator course, my digital coaching program, and so much more, all for $197. This is no ordinary coaching program. Sign up now to begin your breakthrough process now. Go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash circle to get started today. Good afternoon, everyone. Jeffrey Combs, looking a little disheveled here this morning, baby, this afternoon. It's been a really interesting morning, afternoon, a lot of production. GMS Studios. We're going to have some great guests coming up later in the Early, later in the fall, I'm going to have T.C. Bradley, a gentleman who's actually once my sponsor in network marketing and direct sales, who went on to become a multi-millionaire in assisting people with a brand to take their book to bestseller. That is my boy, my homie, T.C. Bradley. And you're going to see me doing some filming with him. My team, Carolyn Olson and Alec Friel, and I will be going down to Tampa, Florida. Actually, we'll be going to Fort Myers, Florida in December to do that filming. So welcome aboard here. I just finished a coaching hour with with Justin Perlino, so I know Justin is on here right now. So we are absolutely live here. So if you just dialed into the More Heart Than Talent video call, I'm still in the process of, of undoing the neurological network of neurons that wire and fire that say, welcome to our Tuesday night more heart than talent call because it's now a video that we do record and is available for playback tomorrow wednesday at 9 a.m pacific standard time and that is noon eastern so we have some great content today have a great team who is in my circle of influence alex friel chris shar and carolyn olson so i want to give them really due credit for all they do to put this this put this video on for you so i'm head, sitting here at in an office that we're rebuilding. We're going to be building a whole new set and studio for the Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle Wednesday live call that we do, coaching call, and then this two or video call. And then for this Tuesday video that we do every Tuesday at 4 o'clock Eastern time. Have some great content for you this afternoon. And what we're going to cover this afternoon is understanding the drama addict. Finding emotional sobriety. And what does that actually mean to create sobriety in a different way to look at addictions for so you that understand that there are emotional addictions that turn into other addictions. And the more you understand cause and effect, why you do what you do, then you will be in a position to separate your feelings from the events that shape them. Now, real quickly, if you're on this call or if you're on this video, if you're on this video and you've not taken advantage of a free 20-minute coaching session, I will be able to offer you that free 20 minutes from the comfort of your home and give you an evaluation of what I can assist you with, especially when it comes to the let go process. Most of society holds on to a set of feelings and then represses them. They hold on to a series of events that they don't understand, forget, don't remember, and don't, don't really understand. And then I come along and I'm very skilled at showing you how to separate those feelings from the events. So I offer free 20 minute coaching calls. You can inbox me on Facebook with your phone number and I'll return your message very, very quickly. This Saturday, I will be in Portsmouth, New Hampshire with Abby O'Neill. 
Thank you, Abby. And with that, I'm going to move into the inspirational portion of today's video. I'm going to be covering today the drama addict and how, the, and how to really find emotional sobriety. Now, what does emotional sobriety mean? Well, it means the ability to separate your feelings from the events. It means you're a day at a time. You're able to be in a state of awareness called consciousness, elevating your emotional state into an energy that's conducive to creating joy, bliss, reciprocity, prosperity in a very relaxed body. And in that body, you're in a state where you're not overwhelmed. You're not unorganized. You're in an emotional discipline where you're not all over the map emotionally. You're not worried. You're not anxious. You're able to focus on results and solutions, but you do this in a relaxed body, not an intense body. Not by God, if I don't do it, I'm going to kill myself. It's going to kill. I'm going to, I'm going to do it if it kills me. And that, that's not a relaxed body. That's a very intense body. And even in a level of relaxed intensity, it's not always effective or conducive to creating an outcome that's favorable. So when you're able to go to bed at night, you want to be able to rest. However, if you're in a high degree of emotions, if you find yourself overwhelmed frequently, if you constantly are undoing situations that you create, or you find yourself in other people's turmoil, then there's a high probability that you're overwhelmed. In that type of overwhelmed state, there's a high probability that you either do this occasionally, sporadically, or frequently, you find yourself in drama. Now, the kind of drama that I'm going to cover today, there's different types of drama. Now, I've invented a spray. I have a bottle that I wrote on drama repellent that you can spray on people who are drama addicts. Now, if you're in recovery of drama or you grew up in a household where there's a lot of drama, then you will understand a little bit about what I mean. But what many people do is they overwhelm themselves and then they exhaust themselves and they exert way too much energy and they talk about how hard and how difficult situations are. Are, and they create situations that they unwind so they can get a neurochemical high in the spike that goes like this. They spike up in their emotional state. They go, oh, my God, I'm so relieved. I was able to overcome this problem that I created so I can fulfill my neurochemical dependency on being exhausted. And being exhausted is not pretty. Being exhausted is also not attractive. Now, if you want to be attractive, it's not only in the physical world, but your emotional energy that's attractive is an energy that transmutes from love, joy, bliss, from certainty, from belief, from understanding who you are, what you're becoming, your sense of certainty, your vision, clarity. You know who you are and what you're doing with who you are. And you're able to do that one day at a time. Now, that looks attractive to many people because that type of energy is very clear. It's very clean. And that kind of energy is attractive. That's an attractor factor energy that comes from certainty, belief, and most importantly, from awareness. Now, if you find yourself in anxiety, fear, and doubt, there's a high probability that you're either creating problems, resolving problems, or in someone else's problem. Now, this comes from codependency, over-obligating, drama, chaos, being unorganized, being undisciplined. These are very common characteristics of a large percent of society. Now, if you volunteer to opt out, and you're volunteering to opt out, of what is conditioned behavior that many people consider normal, then welcome aboard here because that means you're going to step into emotional freedom. But to be and stay in any type of emotional state is to understand cause and effect of why you do what you do. And if you don't understand why you do what you do, then you'll continue to perpetuate the same set of feelings, expecting a different outcome so you can stay disappointed. A large percent of society says, I don't understand why this happens to me. This always happens to me. I don't know why this happens to me. Well, there is a reason. It's called a series of events that are repressed, that are unresolved, that the body runs the brain so you can recreate the same situation over and over and create your disappointment. Now, here are some of the key char characteristics of when it comes to drama and how what you're going to be about this process. Now, here's what you'll learn in this week's training about the drama addict. The drama addict tr constantly creates crisis, and they operate in crisis. They usually are late. They do things at the last minute. They avoid paying taxes. They don't make their bed. They, do, they, make, they barely make it to an airport on time. They're getting into that seat. I mean, they do things last minute. It means these are chronic wingers. And if you're a chronic winger, 
then it's imperative that you take a good look objectively without criticizing self at why you do what you do. If you grew up in a family that do situations at the last minute, that doesn't mean that it's an inherited trait, it's not the DNA, but if you're doing this in the same behaviors over and over, it's because you've been conditioned. If you have challenges being organized, if you're undisciplined, if you have challenges finding things, if you lose things, if you're constantly behind, these are signs and, and qualities of someone who lives in a lot of trauma. Now, if you live in a state of, of awareness and, you have, and you're organized and you're detailed and you do things in a routine and a system, well, you're not going to experience this same kind of spike in the emotions that people who create a lot of drama. Drama requires other drama. Drama is a force counterforce situation where there is an opposition. In drama, you have to overcome the situation, and the body receives a benefit called a payoff by being able to overcome the situation. Then the self, then the self-esteem is self-confidence because confidence has to create a victory. Confidence operates off a win-lose dichotomy, a black and white situation. So if you're overcoming your own problems, it's you're overcoming your own, you're creating your own victories so you can feel important in your ego. Now that doesn't mean you're arrogant or egotistic. It means you have very low self-esteem. And that kind of esteem requires this push-pull, this right-wrong, this black-white dichotomy to create the conflict. And if you can't find someone to be in conflict, you'll be in conflict with self. And that's part of the drama that gets perpetuated and created over and over to fulfill a neurochemical high called anxiety. A drama is anxiety. The worry about an outcome that hasn't happened, the possibility of getting on the telephone, the possibility of putting the fingers on the keypad and actually putting myself out there. That's what many people, they get anxious about going out there. Like there's a window right in front of me that would be out there. Well, out there is a mythical, magical place that doesn't really exist. And out there means outside of your body, consumed and worried about people violating you, making you wrong, making you feel bad, or you offending someone, or saying the wrong thing, or actually saying the right thing. Whatever the story it is that you tell yourself, that is drama. Storytellers are chronic drama addicts. Storytellers tell stories to avoid changing. Storytellers tell stories to avoid responsibility. Storytellers tell stories so that they can procrastinate and avoid the inevitable, that is failure. Many people have an anxiety about failing, but they fail to engage, they fail to change. They fail to improve. They fail to be and stay sober. They fail failing because failing is their identity. And many people create the very situation they seek to avoid. Now, in being a drama addict, it's imperative that you understand why you do what you do. So the drama addict lives in constant crisis, but there's also a disorganization space that a lot of people live in. Dis means not organized. So if you're not organized, it means you don't have a routine, you don't have a system, and you are rebelling and winging it. You may be rebelling against your parents. You may have rage against the machine, the government. You may not want to conform to certain situations. Now, you don't want to fall in line. You don't want to be an employee any longer. Well, that's all great, but if you're an unorganized, undisciplined success seeker, then that relegates you to winging it. And if you wing it, you're not going to wing it to success. What you'll do is you will wing it to an emotional state called overwhelm. Being overwhelmed is an addiction, meaning that if you do the same thing over and over and create a similar result or a similar outcome, there's a high probability that you're emotionally addicted to it. So if you're always overwhelmed, well, being overwhelmed is an effect. It's not a cause. Being overwhelmed comes from usually losing your innocence as a child, having to take on a role that is not a role that you should have ever taken on, becoming a grown-up before your time, taking care of a brother or sister, being a babysitter for your family, bringing home the bacon, earning income for your family, giving it away to the family. I mean, see, there's some of the situations that create lost innocence. Now, this lost innocence also tends to lead to being overwhelmed because the body runs the brain. The body starts to worry about outcomes that have not happened. This is what overwhelmed is. And then the brain and the body collide, include, and they want to be able to control an outcome. 
And what the outcome that ends up being controlled is being out of control. This is what happens when you're overwhelmed. When you're overwhelmed, you're typically attempting to control control that you're out of control of. And that type of control is now called anxiety. And this kind of anxiety creates a heightened awareness in your emotional state, and then it spikes. It spikes up neurologically and spikes up in energy sometimes into 200, 250, 300 cycles a second because that frantic, frantic state that you, that you receive is the benefit you get when you're overwhelmed. And so the body becomes addicted to that overwhelmed state, and it also becomes addicted to the high that is created by pulling it off at the last minute. The exhausted state of energy that's right above apathy and depression because you just pulled it off. Oh, my God. I'm so exhausted. And that's how drama addicts talk. They talk about being exhausted, how difficult, how hard, how arduous. I have a long way to go. You can spot a, a drama addict very quickly because they talk about difficulty. They live in a degree of difficulty. And they unwind and talk themselves out how difficult the situation is. Then they're exhausted. They also want other people to buy into how exhausted they are. They want people to go, oh, wow, you're such a noble struggler, dude. So proud of you. That is so awesome how much you struggle. I, I commend you because your struggle is so empowering to everyone. That's how many people walk around. I want other people to recognize them and give them a pat in the back. Well, here's a bone, or do you have the mouth to chew it with? I mean, which one is, is it you're looking for? Or the metal or the chest to pin it on? Because it's unfortunately what many people do. They want recognition for being an addict, and they want to be recognized for how difficult it is to be an addict. That's what a drama addict wants. And if you've ever been in a family gathering or a gathering where drama addicts around, they go, oh my God, what's going on with our country? It's so difficult. The president of our country is ruining it. Oh my God, the, the state of the economy. Oh my God, Jimmy Garoppolo went down. The 49er Cedarson is absolutely over. Their backup quarterback just doesn't have it. No, this once again, we people play the game to see if they can win, not predict their losses. This is unfortunate. What many people do is they communicate with them with their brain and their body in an overwhelmed state, creating the very outcome they seek to avoid to create the outcome that's familiar. That is called disappointment. Now, this is very challenging for the addict to understand because the addict wants to be right. The addict wants to reason themselves. Well, that doesn't make reason. That doesn't stand to reason. I don't understand why my girlfriend lost her keys. That that just doesn't make sense. That just doesn't that isn't I can't make sense of that. So that's what an, that's what a drama addict does is they exhaust themselves trying to make sense of senselessness. Because here's why. Because consciousness does not make sense. Consciousness does not rely on the analytics. Consciousness is awareness. Consciousness is no. When you know, sense has no relevance. So when someone says, well, hypothetically speaking, worst case scenario, well, consciousness doesn't operate on that. Consciousness is not out in the future. Consciousness is now. And so in now, in consciousness, you're open to the web. The web is the solution. The web of consciousness is where creativity, innovation, spontaneity, this is where your reflexes become very, very imperative. Then in a relaxed body, you're able to sense, see, touch, feel, understand, most importantly, know you're in the right place at the right time. Conscious does, consciousness does also not respond to anxiety, fear, and doubt. So consciousness is a B state. It has no shape and no form. And as you move into a higher state of consciousness, you will seldom be or get overwhelmed. And it's that overwhelmed state that allows you to be and stay addicted to a set of feelings that creates the actions and inactions that lead to chaos, drama, and overwhelm. And in that overwhelmed state, this is where you get behind. This is where you miss payments. This is where you're late. This is where you're in conflict. This is where you validate, justify, and explain yourself. When you're overwhelmed and you're in a lot of drama, it takes way too long to complete tasks because you're in so much drama. When you're in drama, you have a lot of open loops. Now, this is what that looks like. An open loop is a series of circles that stay open. That's an open loop. This is, these are called projects. This is what many people do, is they take on and they start projects. 
and they're projection conscious, but they're also not they're 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 not the type of person that can complete projects. So they're commitment phobic. And so they have a lot of open loops. And those open loops are what create worry. And if you're worried all the time, if you're always worried, this is another way to be a drama addict. Because when you're in drama, you want other people to buy into your drama and you're seeking other drama seekers. Drama seekers tend to congregate together and they talk about their drama. Oh, my God. I want to just tell you how difficult. Oh, I can relate. It is so difficult. Oh, it's so hard. Oh, my God. Oh, the traffic. And so drama addicts also focus on flaws. Drama addicts find the flaws. They expose them. And they want everyone else, they want other people to fall in line with all the flaw findings they live, they do, and they become. So in today's content, it's your responsibility, being able to respond, to receive, understand, disseminate, realize, be conscious, be aware of why you do what you do. I am the master, one of the tops in the world, at assisting people to understand cause and effect. Just last night, a woman told me a story, and real quickly in the story, I was able to break that story down for her, disseminate the facts so she could have a better understanding of cause and effect, and so that she could eliminate these words. Now, these are the most common words that the American populace says over and over. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really highlight this for you. Now, these are three words that the American populace says, and I mean, they say them frequently. Now, they even insert these three words in sentences, like it's a part of the sentence, and they think it's part of the sentence structure. And I'm going to put an exclamation point on this for emphasis. So these are the three most common words that people who stay overwhelmed state in their sentence structure over and over. I don't know. I don't know. They say, I don't know frequently. I don't know. 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 What does it mean? I don't know. So this is, I don't know. I don't know what I don't know means. I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand. I don't grasp it. I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. Consciousness does not rely on sense. Self-esteem has no shape and no form. Self-esteem is not about sense. Self-esteem is about love. And in love, no, there's love, loving, and being lovable. And in, and in that type of energy, you exude a different type of emotion. And that kind of, that kind of emotion is very attractive. People feel you. You're not in drama. You're not making people wrong. You're able to separate your feelings from events. You don't have to prove someone wrong. You're not in conflict. You're able to walk away. And then here's another, here's another set of words that drama addicts love to use in their sentence structure. And this is so classic. Now, as you begin to eliminate... I don't know, and you can eliminate these words. These, these are two words, but these are also equally important. Four letters and three letters. Here it is. You may have already surmised it. Yeah, but these are other words that drama addicts like to edify. They love to edify these terms so they can perpetuate a set of feelings that keeps them in drama. So if you are seeking to release yourself from drama, here are some key components that will allow you to separate your feelings from the events. First of all, understand that disorganization and procrastination tend to go hand in hand. Disorganization is the overwhelmed state. Procrastination is the avoid state. These two situations are common, they're frequent, they show up over and over when it comes to being in drama. So being disorganized means you have no system, no method, you're rebelling against self. And being disorganized, one of the most challenging addictions that you will face. I spend hours and hours with people breaking down from them the cause that creates the effect of why they do what they do, then very simple, relaxed strategies to separate feelings and events so you can be organized. So being organized really means being systemized, having a, having a process, living in a routine, having a way of life. That means you cease winging it. You're not behind. You don't feel overwhelmed all the time. You're able to delegate and pass on to other people. So or being disorganized and procrastinating are two major components that keep people in drama. Procrastination means two words, two Avoid, that's what many people do. They avoid, they avoid conflict, they avoid changing, they avoid sobriety, they avoid getting clean and sober, they avoid success, they avoid failure, they avoid avoidance, they're chronic avoiders. So these two situations 
once again, disorganized and procrastination. I wrote a book called The Procrastination Cure. You can buy it through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Golden Mastermind, goldenmastermind.com. Any, any place you, you can purchase that book, purchase it and really have a better understanding of why you do what you do. If you don't, contact me immediately, and I'll give you insight on the events that shape the feelings. I'm very skilled at breaking this down. I mean like very skilled in a very short period of time. Now, uncovering the causes that creates the effect, once again, this is my niche. So events are what shape feelings. If you don't understand why you do what you do, there are a series of events that happen somewhere between Two, three, four, five. I had a gentleman at one of my events over the weekend. He's had challenges releasing weight. And I asked him, you know, why, why, does, why does he hold his weight? Why are you overwhelmed? Why, why is food your drug of choice? So people in the room were going, I'd go, that's an effect, that's an effect, that's an effect, that's an effect, that's an effect. So people were pointing out the effects, but the effect is not the cause. The cause are the events. I asked him what his drug of choice was. I asked him who his food confidant was growing up, who introduced him to this food group, how this food became a reward system, and how his brain now operates on a reward system. So anytime he's anxious, his brain requires a neurochemical high, which is pleasure, and then he's going to feel bad. That's pain. That's the pleasure pain syndrome that creates the payoff that the addict doesn't want to admit. Now, be, like me, I'm a, I'm a sage. So I walk around this planet and I'm a prophet. I'm showing people how to create prophets, but I'm imparting wisdom to people. And I'm, my niche is really assisting people to understand the cause that creates the effect of why you do what you do, separating your feelings about the event, collapsing the event that created the feelings you hold on to that are repressed, and then letting them go. And is that what you do is you just let go? No, it's not a just, it's not a joust. It's <laughs> joust. It's being able to separate your feelings from events. Well, how do I? That's, it's not a how do I state, it's an I am state. If you just tell me, I just did. You separate your feelings from the events that shape them and you do it in a longer breath cycle. There's a longer breath cycle. If you're an addict, you're in a short breath cycle like this in drama, chaos, waiting for someone to violate you. And if you can't find someone to violate you, you'll start criticizing, oh my God, I'm so bad at this. Oh, I'm just, I'm not good at writing. I can't put myself out there. I'm not good at selling. Oh, I'm just such a failure. I'm just gonna continue to talk myself into a happy hour. And if it's not happy hour, I'll go to where there's free food. I'll go to the hometown buffet. I'll go to, I'll get some Somonex. I'll get some sleeping medication or some NyQuil. You know, the breakfast of champions for people who stay up all night, NyQuil, the people that hear the birds chirping in the morning, any way to take that edge off. And if, you're, if you are in a place where you are ready to receive, the pain is great enough, and you are seeking release and relief, contact me, or simply let go. Separate your feelings from the events. Collapse the events. Let them go. Breathe in a longer breath cycle, meaning from your limbic brain down into the bottom of your abdomen. Then your body falls forward. It changes your whole changes your whole skeletal structure because you drop forward. Your back and neck begin to align differently rather than sitting like this, subluxating C1 and C2 in your neck because of how uptight, how much drama, how chaos, how late, how far behind you are on your on this and say, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Look at your feet, baby, because you're right there because of all the steps you've taken that brought you to this place called now. If you're seeking recovery or you're seeking relief, insight, I offer free 20-minute coaching sessions. I also have a lot of free products and downloads you can take advantage of on goldenmastermind.com. I have an inner circle coaching program called the Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle Coaching Program. This is the Golden Mastermind Pizza Box. Now, we do not send pizza to our clients. We do not have combination pizzas. I am a, you may have already known this, I'm a sausage and pepperoni man. Lots of sauce, extra cheese. Yes, I know that's 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 that would be my drug of choice. But let me show you what's in the GMS pizza box. Thank you for listening to the More Heart Than Talent Radio. If you enjoyed today's content and would like more insight and education to the breakthrough process, you can get my new Breakthrough Factor audio training for free today. It's seven hours of breakthrough content to assist you to break through in life and business. This training is currently for sale on my website 
for $497, but I'm giving it to you for free as a bonus to persuade you to try my new coaching program called the Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle. It's my proven system to teach everyday people and entrepreneurs how to break through to success. When you join the Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle, you will participate in two private video coaching calls per month that you and my other members receive access to. On each call, the first half, I'll be teaching the skill of the week and giving you an assignment related to the topic. You will have the opportunity to post your homework in my private JCIC Facebook group. The Facebook group is a place where you can interact with me, my Golden Mastermind team, and other JCIC members. On the second half of the coaching call, I'll be coaching JCIC members one-on-one -on -one live for you to observe. As a member, you can register for your own live one-on-one -on -one coaching session during this call. They're all recorded and posted in the JCIC members area for you to review while you are an active member. You will also receive a new member's welcome kit in my new Breakthrough Factor audio program absolutely free for joining. You can sign up today for just $197. This is no ordinary coaching program. Sign up now to begin your breakthrough process now. Go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash circle to get started today. Thank you.